Hey everyone, welcome to Chip and Dip. Today I'm going to be interviewing Sam Haig, yes. our vicar at Come Preston on. Minster. I'm so excited to see him suffer with all the seeds. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be good, can't wait. Um, we're basically, we've got our french fries ready to go. We're going to dip them in some hot sauce, ask some questions. It's going to be great. <laughs> So let's just head straight in, Sam. Definitely. Shall we start with our first sauce? Absolutely. Firstly, we've got sweet chilli sauce. It shouldn't be too... I, I did test them last night. There's a little bit of a kick, okay. but it shouldn't be too bad. Dunk it in there. Okay. So We're talking full coverage. Yeah. Okay. This is just a little treat, this one. Get the palate... Um, what's the word? Mmm. Sort of almost warms up the palate. That's the one. You know. That's the one. Mm, it's got a kick to it. Not bad though. But no, it's, it's sweet. Yeah. It's, I like that. Yeah. First question. Okay. Who are you, Sam? Tell us a bit about yourself. What do you do? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. My name is Sam Haig, and I am, my official title actually is Vicar of Preston. Wow. The whole city of Preston. I, didn't, I don't think I actually knew that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Vicar of Preston. So it's, yeah. And, uh, and that's because of the Minster. Because the Minster is a very important church. Okay. So yeah, I'm chaplain to the mayor, mm -hmm. and yeah, there's been a church here in Preston Minster for like way over a thousand years, so mm -hmm. it's a super important um, church, um, and yeah, that's what I do. Wow, that's pretty big. Yeah. So how, let's go right back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. How did you become a Christian? Great Wait. question. Next thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which one's it? Hot pepper sauce. Hot pepper sauce? Okay. Yeah. It's the levels of heat are just going to keep going up, so we'll okay. see if we can both handle the heat. Yeah. Wow. Oh. That's definitely got a real kick to it, hasn't it? Oh. The stage went up quite fast. That went up quite, yeah, that was a big jump. I imagine, oh, that was... <gasps> Cheers. Okay, yeah. Water that makes it worse. Mm. I think it like spreads it out. Does it? But I'm drinking oh anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Still, still burning a bit. Woo! I think we can press on, Beth. Okay. Okay. How did you become a Christian? How did I become a Christian? Yeah. Well, I did grow up going to church at all. Okay. So no Christian background, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, basically when I got to eighteen. Um, a friend of mine started going on to the local church. Mm. Now, I was asking big questions at the time. Okay. I'd left school at 16. I had like one GCSE in humanities. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I really thought that leaving school would be the best thing ever. But yeah. then I left school and I went to work. And I used to be a mechanic. Okay. I worked on buses, fixing wow. buses for a living. I did an apprenticeship for four years. Uh, but it was a big eye opener for me. I was looking around um, the place where I was working and people really were not living for anything other than the weekend okay. or the annual holiday or whatever. Mm. So for me, I was just thinking, is there more to life than this? Is this yeah. all there is? Like, cause I so looked forward to leaving school, but then it was a bit of a letdown. Yeah. So at the same time, so one of my friends, uh, a girl called Emma Roberts, mm -hmm. yeah, she was called Emma Richardson then, <laughs> um, uh, started going along to a local church and she invited me along. Uh, and I met some Christians for the first time ever. Wow. I don't really ever remember meeting Christians growing up. Oh, and really? Wow. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. And I was really struck by the way they lived and how they, um, yeah, they just lived totally differently to the way that I was living at the time. Mm. Uh, and I found that really, really attractive. Yeah. So, yeah, they, uh, they were great. I asked them loads of questions. And then after understanding, you know, just some of the basics of the Christian faith, it was like a light bulb went on. It was like I was in a dark room. I heard about Jesus, the light bulb went on, wow, everything cool. made sense, wow. that's how it happened. And Emma now is married uh, to one of my best mates, Tim, who Amazing. works here at the Minster as well, and yeah. That's such a cool story. Yeah. It's so, it's nice to hear like different stories that are so different from mine and like how I, yeah. I like grew up in a Christian family and stuff, so it's cool to see like all the differences of people coming to faith and like, yeah. for, that's a big... Your friend took you to church, it was just like so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's the dream, isn't it? To yeah. take your friend to church and like actually, wow, you've now become a vicar, so like, totally. that's so cool. Yeah. 
Amazing. It's cool. Next. Next. Next day. Oh no, on. next. I've forgotten about this. <laughs> um, Tabasco. No, I use this sometimes, Beth. Do you do my, you Tabasco? Um, I put it on cheese on toast. It's very nice. Do you? The cheese on toast and Tabasco is very good. Mm. But it is spicy. So this could hurt a bit. No, I like my cheese on toast. What? Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, Worcestershire sauce. I haven't had that for ages. I that got was a jack potato last night. Did you? And that should have been swapped around, shouldn't it? I think it's. it's oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bit of an afterburn. Got you've that. got to let it. You've got to let it. Yeah. But I would say that one was was a bit spicy. Yeah, I think it was. We'll learn from our mistakes. <laughs> so Sam, what led you? What can you like describe any moments in your life that led you towards mm. what you do now? Um, yeah, um, after I became a Christian, um, the thing I was most passionate about was sharing my faith with other people. Um, and I remember going along to Soul Survivor uh, after I'd been, been a Christian maybe like six months, something like that. And um, I went along to a seminar called like, Becoming a Vicar, How to Become a Vicar. Wow. And I was only 18 at the time. That's um, cool. And yeah, um, I was really struck by the opportunities that like... Uh, opened up for, for vicars to share their faith and things like that. So yeah, um, basically went along to that seminar mm -hmm. um, and learned about what it looks like to be a vicar and like just thought it was brilliant. And just remember, like I also at the same time um, when I became a Christian went along to this traditional church in the morning where I, I lived really close to this traditional church. So for some random reason, like aged 18, mm -hmm. started going along to this church where there was like 20 people. And this is different to the one so you went to? It's different to the one, yeah, yeah okay. it's very different to the one um, I went to yeah. in the evening. Yeah. So this morning church, really traditional, loads of old people. Uh, and it was very, very quiet, maybe like 20 people, mm -hmm. except on the fourth Sunday of the month when there'd be a baptism and it was packed. Well, like, every month. Like, yeah, every month. That's cool. And there'd be loads of people come, they would bring their kids and be like 200 people wow. there who had no idea about the Christian faith and mm -hmm. would never darken the doors of a church. And I just remember like thinking I would love the opportunity to stand in that pulpit and tell those mm -hmm. people about Jesus because that's what they need. You know, they have problems. Uh, they were, you know, everybody needs Jesus and those people needed Jesus. Yeah. And I was so thankful for what he'd done in my life yeah. that I really wanted to share that. And I just thought actually going into being a, being a vicar um, actually gives you a massive opportunity to share your faith. Mm. Uh, so yeah. Amazing. So. so how long was that process of you like going to that seminar at Soul Survivor and then actually... Yeah, it took me two years, so I okay. went to the seminar. And, and then you had to go through stuff. Go through lots you? of stuff, and basically because I had like one GCSE, they were like, you need to do like more educational stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, and you need to, you know, have more experience with the Church of England, and okay. do placements, and I went on residentials and stuff. So it took me two years, and it was a good way really to test the core, because essentially, uh, if it wouldn't have been God, then I would have just given up. So That's it was true. kind of, there's so many hurdles, it was like, okay, you've done that, you need to do this, yeah. you need to do this next thing, this next thing. So it was this, this long process, quite intense, um, of uh, going through um, yeah, that sort of selection process that then led to me being accepted for a training in the Church of England and going off to college. Yeah, I went wow. to Cambridge, which was nuts because so I grew up in like, yeah, a sort of fairly um, working class mill town in West Yorkshire and had mm -hmm. never really left. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, was in Cambridge, like the centre of wow. academia and, and all that sort of stuff. So that's amazing. Yeah, such a good story. story. And then you went to London. Yeah, and then I went to London okay. to work as a vicar for uh, five years in the yeah. HTV network. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So cool. Okay, you ready for your next question? Oh. The next question. Right. Next question. Next question. I feel like I'm gonna have to read this. For you all right. It's a long okay. Time. So I know that there are a few people few young people in our community that are like wanting to step into leadership yeah. and stuff like that and it might for them it might look like leading a church in a few years or mm. for them right now it might mean like leadership in schools or something like that yeah what advice would you give them right now mm. for either they might have like felt god say i really want you to become a vicar mm. or they might have felt god say i want you to step into this area of leadership what would you mm. tell them yeah, right it's a great Let's... question. First of all, it's a great question to be asking. Should we, mm. should we do this first? I think so. Do this first. Nando's extra, extra hot. Nando's extra hot. Oh, oh my goodness. 
I don't think I'm gonna be able to talk after this, Beth. <laughs> I um I had like a chili seed stuck in my tooth the whole of that Did last you? question and I could still feel it like burning. Yeah. It's not bad at, it's not bad at first. No. But then it's not. it really It's quite a nice lemony. Yeah, it's a bit lemony. Mmm. It's not I'm not too bad, you know. It no, it, it sort of like catches your throat, I think, as time go, as it, time Does goes it? on. I think this one. That one's a killer, isn't it? That was a killer. <laughs> <laughs> Just swap <walk> around. <laughs> um, yeah. What would your advice be? Leadership. Okay, so leadership mm -hmm. is influence, essentially. Okay, so yeah. what I would say is, first of all, be aware that you are a leader. Everybody exercises leadership to some extent. Mm, Leader very true. Leadership is just essentially influencing people and we do that for for good or for bad mm -hmm. so what i would say what i would encourage is to add some intentionality to to what you're doing you're already influencing people mm. um you know just be intentional in in uh, influencing people towards jesus and influencing people towards what is good and what mm. is godly and things like that yeah so yeah i would i would say if you're yeah, like if you're um, wanting to be a leader Get around people as well who are who are uh, kind of a few stages ahead of you. So you might be a teenager in high school. Uh, well, if you see somebody who's excelling uh, as as a Christian leader, maybe just like grab a drink with them and just take a <laughs> notebook and ask them all your and write down some questions before you get there and just ask them your questions and then just be quiet and listen. Uh, the best way to grow as a leader is is literally just to get around people who are already leading and, and excelling in their areas and then uh, listen to them and uh, yeah, learn from them. I mean, listen to podcasts. I listen to the Craig Groeschel Leadership Podcast. Fantastic. We sometimes listen to that we in do. our meetings, don't we? <laughs> uh, and it's literally just 20 minutes every month of pure leadership gold. Mm. And I think the more you can get around leaders and the more input you can get from leaders who are who love Jesus and who are influencing people for good and for God, then the faster you will grow as a leader. Mm. That would be my advice. Yeah. That sounds all right. Sounds great. I'm just going to wipe my nose because it's starting to go. <laughs> I, um, go to that level I really like, I like what you said about we're all influencing someone. So whether we feel that like passion about stepping into leadership or not, mm. we've got to sometimes ask ourselves that question of, how like are we influencing people in good things or bad things or like maybe just step back a little bit and see yeah look at ourselves and see like how how we're influencing people yeah absolutely <sighs> right I'm ready number, for the number last five one. okay I'm go for it yeah. what is it I don't know it just Carolina looks like... Reaper chili oh. our hottest chili sauce try it at your own risk you know it looks like tomato sauce though yeah it's quite thick this one yeah. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's definitely got a kick to it, isn't it? <laughs> Not getting it, yeah. It does, it's, yeah, it's the afterburn. It? Oh yeah, and it starts, starts like at the back and then just kind of takes over your whole mouth. It's quite unkind really because it oh. doesn't happen at first, does it? It doesn't, you, you, you load into a false sense of security and then you think to yourself, oh this is easy. I can smash anything. I can I can handle anything, and then and then it just increases. Have you ever had a vindaloo? Have you? I've had a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last question. Yeah. As the leader, press the minster. Yeah. Why do you think young people are so important to our church and to the church uh, worldwide? Great question. I think. Um, Young people are so important because essentially, um, uh, you know, what, what's happening at the moment is young people are formulating what they think about, you know, all kinds of things like mm. God and the world and so on. So I think it's so important that the church has a strong voice, um, you know, for young people mm -hmm. because actually it's such a crucial time. And what I'd say is um, the church that doesn't value young people actually is a church that is destined to like decline and die really mm. because essentially young people are the future of the church and uh, we really want to be empowering young people to be all that God you know, intends them to be so I think you see like in the example of Jesus like he would just have young people uh, around him like you know the disciples mm -hmm. were probably 
like young men who uh, would, would follow Jesus yeah. or would learn from him. And that's something that we're to have uh, in, as, a, as part of our culture in the church, actually, uh, that young people are hugely valued, also have a part to play, uh, and, and also, um, like all of us, lots to learn. Mm. So yeah, for me, that's why young people are so important and so valued at Preston Minster. Fantastic. Sam, thanks so much. Pleasure. Is your mouth on fire? It is a bit on fire. This corner of my face. <laughs> yeah, don't get me. It looks like it's numb. <laughs> Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for more content coming up soon, and then you get like a little ding in the corner of your screen. Um, they're the technical terms. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.